Hey there and good afternoon. <clears throat> Gosh, we have a good one for you today. It is interview intervention in a pandemic world. What are we going to do about that? Uh, let's just share my screen one second here. Ah, there we go. Well, welcome. You know, uh, interview intervention, you know, I named this lecture uh, intervention on purpose. Most of us need an intervention before our next interview happens. Um, we really misunderstand what it's about. We go in there and we allow ourselves to be questioned. Um, yes, it is an interview. They're going to ask us questions, but really you're not there to answer questions. You're there to use that idea of the question and answer to influence them, to persuade them of your value. And that is something uh, much more akin to being a sales meeting. That's, that's what an interview is. It's a sales meeting where you have a chance to position and sell yourself. So how much uh, preparation you put in is really gonna determine how much success as well. It's your job to teach them that you are the right individual. So you wanna think about every part of that conversation being a chance not only to prove you're capable, qualified, interchangeable, but if you're only that, you get less money, you have to be that and also be something exceptional, different, something that's a little bit out of line from the rest of them. In case you haven't seen me before, John Krant, author, career coach, and speaker, resume and LinkedIn guru as well. Uh, seven or eight years in outside recruitment on a desk as a traditional headhunter, having to go into those competitor companies, finding that superstar, luring them out, really so close to being a glorified dating guru, very, very close to that. Also was the national trainer across 100 offices. Everybody that would come in to be a potential recruiter, they'd come into my 90 day program to teach them how hiring really works. Not how people think it works because gosh, it, it really doesn't work that way or we probably wouldn't be here today. Of course, my book's a good resource available on my website and over on Amazon. A few other things on my website, halfway down the page, the entire LinkedIn lecture is there, both me, the slides, you can make me large or the slides large, whatever's really best for you. You can use that as a start and stop tutorial while you're improving your own LinkedIn profile, really turning it into a three-dimensional sales brochure. Of course, a few more resources over on my LinkedIn side, just click on my articles, uh, especially how your resume shouldn't become resume roadkill, and that will help you a lot. Well, today is about becoming a self-recruiter. We're going to turn this self-recruiter lens toward interviewing. Interviewing is a time of persuasion not a time of evaluation. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're going to evaluate us, but really it's a time for you to get in there and persuade them that you are quite literally the best thing since, uh, that, that bread that was sliced down the middle. We have to think about how we're going to really convey all of those things. It's not as simple as really going after the job. Oh, I'll get the interview. Well, fantastic. And then I'll just kind of get that job. If it only really worked that way, because everyone else is sitting home hitting that darn button. And uh, I think, you know, it almost, uh, almost never says really apply. Most times it says submit all capital letters until we're so submissive. It's like a Friday night waiting for that phone to ring. It's going to ring, going to ring. But when it does, it'll be a telemarketer. I, I think you need to think more unusually, unconventionally, and unexpectedly as you're preparing for your interview session. Uh, really change the rules. Subtitle of my book is changing the rules. Change any rule that doesn't work for you. Uh, where this product, where this product that has to be positioned and marketed, put up on the shelf space, shelf space, and we have to draw attention. Here is the answer of what not to be. Mediocre, of only moderate quality, not very good, ordinary, average, middling, middle of the road. I'm not going to read all the way through this one today, but my gosh, I get, I think you get the idea. Hate to say this is about half the workforce. That's part of the problem. So if there's a sunny side to that, a bright side to that, well, where's the bright side? Well, if you didn't connect the dots, you only have to be just a little tiny bit better than mediocre to really be better than almost everybody out there. And if you simply put a little heart, soul into whatever it is you do, you're naturally going to be that top one, two, three percent. And that's a game changer. Well, for the interview, we're going to have to understand what our story is. So what is your story? And we're going to have to be ready to tell it potentially in person. You never know <laughs> over the telephone, but most likely today it's, it's most times going to be a video interview because that's how we've evolved today. 
and you have to be prepared for whatever technology they present you. Are they using Zoom? Are they using Meet? Are they using Teams? Are they using something else? Who knows what they're using? You're going to have to adapt to it and you're going to have to get yourself up to speed before the interview. Very, very important on that. Now, back to what I said, don't answer questions unless you intend to or choose to. What you need to avoid in the interview is being tricked into regurgitating information. That's not why you're there. It's a sales presentation and nothing should come out of your mouth unless you intend it to. So we're gonna use this device of the Q&A really to position and sell ourselves, and, uh, and hopefully elevate our brand value along the way. But that means we're gonna have to know ourselves as a product. Most of us haven't looked really internally that clearly. Why is it you're more valuable than the next five or six people that are dying to have that job? because you're going to have to outmaneuver those individuals. Now, the secret you may not like, assuming you're capable and qualified, I would never talk with anybody that I did not consider capable and qualified. So that is not the reason I hire you. And yet most job seekers spend their whole time really all about the capable and qualified part of the discussion, which really has very little to do with the decision process. The decision process is about chemistry and confidence. Chemistry, we're a good match. You're a good match for the team. You'll be up to speed quickly. You fit in nicely without ruffling other team members' feathers. Good chemistry piece. And confidence that if I roll the dice on you, I'm going to get something special. I don't know what I'm going to get, but I can imagine it's going to be different from you than from the others. Now, that's engagement. Well, it's closer to this type of engagement. You know, back to the story piece. Uh, we have to think about this because story, the word story presents a problem. We tend to think of storytelling, which we tend to associate with untruthfulness. Well, that's not what we're getting at. What we're getting at is I can tell you the same darn story in a very dull <sighs> way that doesn't work. <laughs> or I can tell you a story in a very interesting way. Now, your interesting parts, what makes you tick, could be part of your professional story. It could be part of your non-work life story and still be the reason you get hired. So we're gonna to have to integrate some of that into our storytelling, which probably requires a full paradigm shift in our approach to even how we enter the interview itself, be it in a physical room or in a, in a Zoom meeting room or something like that. In terms of all of our background, all of our story elements, oh, you probably have a certain way you've liked to tell the story for quite a long time. We need to unwind that, uh, uh, rigid storytelling. And really all those story components have to be filtered through a singular lens. Why is it going to be the best business decision if they hire me today? And does this piece of story help support and elevate that? Or is it just more detail? Still true, still true, but just more detail that dilutes the focus of the meeting. We're going to have to use our emotional intelligence quotient. That's our soft skills uh, to kind of close the gap on everything and to up our perceptiveness. So think of everything here, but really look at those last two, the friendliness and optimism. <laughs> now I'm both the biggest optimist you'll ever find, Sagittarius right here, <laughs> and the biggest pessimist because I'm a trained recruiter. A trained recruiter is taught to disbelieve every single word that flows in through your ears while still keeping a pleasant demeanor. Mm. <gasps> Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Ask them this. Yeah, having a finely tuned listening agent in your brain will help you come up with some great questioning to test things. By the way, your interviewer is doing many of these same things at the same time. So communications mastery is really about incorporating that emotional intelligence piece and all the soft skills, all of our abilities to master putting people at ease. This is about influence. This is about the nuance in communication. Now, in terms of, of having a successful interview, Hard to, you ever, you ever go see some comedy where there's no warm up for the audience? It's just a cold, there goes the curtain, and first person on stage. Does that first person get many laughs? Well, not as many as they probably deserve because the audience is not warmed up. Same on your interview. You need to warm up the audience to your value before you either literally or figuratively walk in that door. That means we're going to open and ask to connect with all those people I'm about to speak with or I may have done that as part of my approach process. But if I didn't do it as part of the approach process to get the interview, my gosh, I need to do it before the interview so they look at me. It's a chance. So 
This is sales process. I'm going to open and ask to connect. I'm going to communicate to them that you're about to meet me. A little gentle reminder. Give them a, a, a little bit of an awareness that I'm professionally appropriate. And of course, include a little stroke to their ego. Simple as this. Looking forward to meeting you on Tuesday. And of course, I'd love to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. Accomplishes all of those things, by the way. So the goal here is to get them over to your LinkedIn profile. This idea of opening their profile triggers the marketing event of them looking at you. You are looking back at them on the six people looked at you. Oh, who, who? Oh, this guy. I'm going to see him on Tuesday. Your message to them about the connect is another chance for them to look at you. All of this is designed so they click on your name. Suddenly they're on your sales brochure, your three-dimensional sales brochure, your LinkedIn profile that should be positioning and selling. And really, in my view, telling much more detail than is ever, ever on the resume. That's where you close the deal in people's minds on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is going to be a, a big piece of this, getting them to look at you. By the way, just because I asked someone to connect, some of those folks may not want to connect with me until after, well, connect with John after Tuesday. Totally fine. Uh, by the way, I'd love you to connect now, but the whole purpose is to get you to look at me, read about me before we're in session. Nudge, nudge, nudge. Small changes change everything and, and certainly perception in this case. So let's make sure we line up as many dominoes as possible that could potentially fall our direction. It's your job to be persuasive. Now let's get in and we're going to teach you how to create a detailed interview plan. So each one of these areas, we're going to come back to and go uh, a deep dive, drill down of all the elements. But right now we're going to go through piece by piece. So in creating a proper interview plan, it's really the same thing as a sales plan, a sales meeting plan. I have to go in and sell to another company. Okay. Where's your agenda? You didn't make an agenda. Oh, I don't think you'll do very well. So we're going to have to build an agenda, even though they run the interview. We're going to have to do a needs analysis. We'll come back and tell you what each of these scary things are. <laughs> We're going to have to select and customize our work life stories because I know you love your stories, but you have to have the right story for the right audience. And you're going to have to decide that in the moment during the interview. So that's going to be a big piece of how we get ready. If there's no buy sign, you can't simply leave the meeting. You're going to have to face that concern and address it right now while you can overcome that objection. So that's a big thing to think about. The rest of the objections, hey, they're going to object to you here. They object to you there. Their job is to object to you. When someone says, well, you don't have this background. I'm excited inside because it's a chess game. I already understand they're testing me. They're probing me. They'd like to know something. And their accusation that I've never worked in this industry or field or whatever it might be they accuse me of. That's simply their tool to see how I'll overcome the objection, how I'll put my thoughts together, how I'll persuade them that I'm really the very best one. And then I'm going to have to close them so mentally they think of me as the very best one. We're going to give you all the details on this. Then, of course, out of that, hopefully, I either get the job or get the next interview. Now, let's drill down deeply under each of those. So in terms of building an agenda, who are you going to meet? Do you know everyone you're going to meet? Well, give me a couple of names couple names, email them back. I just emailed them this morning. Email them again. In addition to yourself and Jim, because I gave you two names. Can you let me know who I'm likely, very important word, to meet with so I can fully prepare for the meeting? If you forget to include that word likely, they're likely not going to answer you. Oh, I'm not sure because <laughs> you didn't give them away. If you include likely, they're going to go, oh, not sure, but probably also uh, besides Jim and myself, maybe maybe two or three of your, your peers. Okay. Well, they didn't give me any names, but I can use LinkedIn as I do in the LinkedIn lecture, reverse searching the company, look across the org chart the way I imagine it. And I can pick out my six peers and go, hmm, well, I'm going to have to build chemistry and instill confidence in two or three of these six people. And they're all different people. So I'm going to have to plan on how to do it with all six, even though I may only actually meet two or three of them. So who am I meeting with? How am I going to build chemistry with them? Because they're all different human beings. What career stories are right? Well, this story is right for that person. Oh no, that person would like to hear this story. That's all part of your preparation process if you can do it. Is there something in your background that will make them jump out of the chair? Is there a story there that we can attach to that? Um, what else do they need to know? What can you leave them thinking? Lots of things to think about in terms of the agenda itself. Needs analysis. Now this is a scary sales term. 
really just means why answer questions before you redetermined what their actual need is. You know, that darn job posting is quite distracting. Let me get a little drink here. Because sometimes we think that job posting is really the job they're trying to hire for. Well, maybe the title, more or less. Maybe some of the elements on there, but that's not really this job. You have to go in and find out what are their pain points. Uh, what would they like to have changed? What would they like to solve? What would they like to be different? You know, also even things like, why is this open? By gosh, I can tell you many things because the whole work product situation surrounding that potential job is very, very different. If the person got promoted, probably left a pretty good trail behind them. Uh, person uh, left on their own. I wonder when they, they left on their own for another job. I wonder when they actually stopped doing this job. Maybe the train's about to derail and, and maybe the train actually has derailed. Maybe they fired the person. Each of the why it's open could tell you a different type of minefield that you may be walking into. Oh my gosh, very important question here. What have they not seen? May seem so simple. If they actually answer this, they're going to tell you exactly why they've not hired. If they, what have you not seen? Well, I haven't seen this. Well, today's your lucky day, Jack, Jim, or Jill. <laughs> this is actually what I have in my background. And I'll dive deeply into that story because it's exactly what they've been looking for that they've not been able to find. Creating an interview plan, our next step is, is to think about those work uh, and life cut stories. This could be our, our uh, work life, could be our non-work life. We have to think about all the things that surround that. Are there certain things that may illustrate a certain skill or a certain value or a certain ability or interest, uh, the specialness of who we are? We're going to have to think about which stories will, will do that and then craft that story out in writing. When you're crafting it in writing, you're doing it as a script, which means it better not be grammatically perfect. Please don't murder the language. That's not what I'm suggesting, but we don't speak in a grammatically perfect way as human beings. When we do, we tend to sound like a canned ham. So you have to uh, write it in your natural voice and then practice it. Objections, that's their job. <laughs> when, they, when they object, I'm excited because that's a chance for me to position and sell. Haven't worked since last year. You haven't worked in this industry. You haven't worked in nonprofit. You haven't worked in corporate. You know, all the things they could accuse you of. So why don't you sit and think about and write out all those things? And what is your amazing comeback to overcome that objection that can just roll off your tongue without any delay? Well, John, you've not worked in this industry. <laughs> you know, I haven't. <laughs> just like it's a gift from up above. This is an agree but disagree technique. By the way, if I haven't worked in this industry, I cannot fake it. That is not going to go well. So the best thing to do is to confront it head on with optimism and no guilt. <laughs> you know, I haven't. And then I'm going to disagree by what I say next. But I'm sure you're going to meet lots of those in the other candidates. Other people are candidates. I'm an individual. <laughs> Words are very important. Other candidates, you see, you know, what I bring to the table is something very, very different. And those combination of things, which I'm so excited to share with you today are the reason why I'm going to be most successful in this role. They're looking for you to convince them chemistry and confidence. So whatever it is, I think you get the idea of how to overcome this. Don't run away from it, but you know, that's not the unique identifier. That's not the unique thing that produces success. That's what they could get on any street corner looking for someone out of this field. You have to sell and be different. So whatever it may be, don't shy away from it. Just know that you have to craft a great way to overcome each objection. Put those objections to the side. Just because they object to you means they like you. Learn how to win the game. So closing questions, if there's no buy sign, by the way, there's only two buy signs. One buy sign is, gosh, I'd love to bring you back next week to meet so-and-so. Great. Indication of the next interview is going to happen for you they do not have to pick the date and time right now. They've already indicated it's going to happen for John. Great. I got a buy sign. The only other indicator is, gosh, I'd love to get your, your references to, to move toward offer. A move toward offer, absolutely only other buy sign. If your meeting begins to close something like this, oh my gosh, John, what an amazing discussion we've had. I I can't believe where the time went. This is, you have a wonderful background. I think, I think you could be amazingly valuable. Sounds so great so far, right? Until they go, but we have a few more people to see. Uh, I, I probably have a decision in six to eight weeks. I, I you know, we'll, we'll, we'll call you, don't call us, and, and never talk to you again. 
<laughs> okay. Well, that didn't go very well. If you get anything that indicates that you did not win, doesn't mean you lost yet, but you didn't win yet. Then if this was a physical interview, I always tell people, why would you get up and leave? <laughs> I don't mean to say they're so long, they're going, uh, security, <laughs> that's not gonna help us either. But why would we walk away from the discussion? Let's overcome that. Maybe, maybe we're gonna use closing questions to help them visualize this whole decision process as a two dimensional race on a timeline. And they're also gonna think about our relationship to it. You know, Jack, what have you, what have you not heard or, or what have we not discussed? Because people's brains are wired differently, positive, negative there, that will help you in your decision process for this role. Well, John, I, I, I think you're this or that, and they're gonna go in on something that they like. Now, this is a pretty good one, by the way. Never quite enough for what I might like to do. So if, if I were doing it myself, I might go, you know, Jack, what, it, what have you not heard? Or what have we not discussed that would help you in your selection of me as the very best individual for this role? Oh, I know that slide says candidate, but made that slide a long time ago. Individual, always make it individual when you're speaking about yourself. Everybody else is a candidate with a little bit of extra da -da -da on the Ds. Because diamond doesn't, it's like cat hair in your mouth. Get rid of those people. They will instantly think of the timeline, you, and what's wrong with you. I know that's scary. But you know what? If they're already not choosing you, if you already didn't win, I'd rather hear what's wrong with me right now while I'm in the discussion so I can overcome that. That only requires confidence. And also keep in mind that they wouldn't waste oxygen on you if they didn't think, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. So all these tests and questions, objections, that's because they're trying to prove to themselves that you are the right person. So let's get ourselves out of the mindset that they're trying to disqualify us. Some of them, of course, are and use it in a very, very different way. That's the basics of building an interview plan. Let's take you through the interview checklist itself. This is just another way to kind of think about some of those same things. First off, the checklist requires we do our research. That's about the job, which you can probably write a better job description that for that job yourself. I mean, you think you're qualified? Put the job description aside. Why don't you write out what you think that job description should be? Then add back a few, maybe a few tidbits out of the job posting. Maybe, maybe why don't we use LinkedIn? And if your LinkedIn network is large enough, you can probably pull everybody that's ever held this job before. How do they talk about that job? Oh, <laughs> great. If we were really thinking, we could go to the direct competitor companies, pull the same person doing the job at the direct competitor anywhere in the country. It's for research. How do they talk about it at the competitor? I don't care that they do it differently at the competitor. People that have done the job here, people that have done the job at the competitor, plus your own understanding of this job, all that combined together, you'd be transformed just in the ability to hold the conversation together. That's the job itself. Research the company, read every word of the website. I hope you understand that you have to copy and paste certain phrases so you can collect them on a Word document and begin to practice how to sound like their own employee, begin to use their own language to make a stronger bond. Company culture, much harder to get to. You may not even figure that part out until you actually work there. Needs analysis, scary, scary, scary. We covered it. Just don't answer too many questions. John, tell me about yourself. They asked me before I could do the needs analysis. I'd love to use agree but disagree technique. I'd love to. Before I do, I'd like to make sure my answers are as focused and valuable as possible for you. Can't let them think you didn't do homework. Of course, I've done my homework. I've read the job posting and, and everything else and done my research, but I'd love to hear, stroke the ego, love to hear from your perspective, your opinion, your advice. You know, what is going to be most critical to get control of in the first 30 to 60 days as I step into this role. First, notice a 30 to 60 day time frame. very important. Also, as I step into this role, oh, I'm, I am verbally projecting myself. They are imagining me, John, stepping into this role right now. 30 to 60 days are gonna tell you what's on fire, which is not listed in the job posting. They just don't put that kind of stuff out there, the dirty laundry. You need to know what the dirty laundry is so you can help wash it, clean it, whatever it is to solve their problems. Do the needs analysis early. Oh, behave, watch that body language. Two things really. It's the sweaty hands if we're in person. Oh, I get it, I get it, very nerve wracking. Well, unclench your hands, keep them open in, in the air. 
If you need to sit down, gently, gently lie them on top of some fabric, gently. Never let them see this stuff. Oh, oh hi. <laughs> Doesn't work very well. The other body language thing is don't eyeball people. Oh, I know you want this job. I know you know, but you can't be one of those statues that never looks away no matter where you go. It's like you have to look and talk with them a little bit and look off to the air to think a little bit, even though you don't need to. Then look back and give them a little more love, give them a little more space. You have to be careful of the body language. Very, very important. Body language also conveys confidence or arrogance or excitement or energy. A lot that can be communicated. We have to be careful. Dress like you are a success. Now, just before this lecture, uh, I was running down to grab my laundry because, you know, it's a middle of the day thing these days. And I ran down to get the, the laundry out of the thing. I had I had uh, compression shorts on and a T-shirt and everything else. If I came onto this lecture dressed like that, I don't think you'd listen to me. You have to look the part. So even in your normal work life, if you no longer have to dress, this is your chance, your one chance to make sure you look like a million bucks. So that one time a year they have the board member visiting or somebody important coming to the office, some big client that uh, you're going to fit in and look just perfectly. Demonstrate and show them. If someone told you not to dress for the interview, but then you showed up looking like a million bucks, they go, oh, didn't they tell you you didn't have to dress? Oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But you know, I have another meeting right after this one with somebody else. <laughs> that's how you, without saying with somebody else, that's how you also make them understand that you're a hot commodity and maybe they should have urgency as they pursue you. Are you listening? Are you listening? I'm gonna give you a lot to think about today and I already have, but you'll forget to listen because you're running down that list. Your major job, once you've done all the homework, is to listen on multiple levels, to hear the actual words, the words that aren't said, hear what's in between the words, and that's gonna help guide you. You need to sell yourself. The whole time. I know you're there to evaluate, but you cannot let them see you evaluate. This is a date. If I came in the room with a bunch of people saying, now, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure if I want to date you, but you know, just tell me a little bit about your background and why are you interesting and why should I why should I consider to I don't think there's gonna be a date with this guy. Not gonna happen. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had to come over and meet you or oh, your eyes, your dreamy hair, whatever it might be. You get that it's a date the whole time. You're there to sell yourself, even excuse me, even though you're evaluating. Would you like more money? Give you a little secret. John Crant would like more money. Hey, that's a reality. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Thing to remember is if they detect that you want more money, they don't want to give it to you. If they detect that you need more money, they're much, much more likely to try to figure out how to give it to you. So the how you win the whole money discussion is simple. Don't talk about money. And of course, my clients go, but when do I... Did we miss one of the directives here? Don't talk about money. They will never get me to talk about money. I will walk out the door and lose this opportunity right now before I will tell them how little to pay me. Because any discussion of money is actually how little can I pay you, no matter how nicely it's put. By the way, under time constraint today, so I'm not going to go through everything around money, but you can pull up any one of my other interview intervention lectures and zoom right to this spot with slide number seven and get a much lengthier discussion of how you handle the money discussion if it comes up. Your goal, though, is to have it not come up. One of my clients went through three or four face-to-face -face interviews, and then they went had and go do a six-panel interview, and then they're like, hey, can you come on up and do an off-site coffee? That's another interview. And then we thought we we're getting the call, and they're like, oh, we're having an open house on Saturday. Why don't you come work the open house? What, like all day Saturday? Oh, I'd, I'd love to. <laughs> or you're not going to get the job. So we did. A and then only after that, suddenly we got the call and the manager is so exasperated going, oh, you're not in the system. <laughs> Masterful. <laughs> My client also English as a second language. And even though they're English as a second language, missing a certain percentage of all the content going by their ears, they still successfully avoid it any money discussion through all those rounds of interview. It's certainly possible. Time to get it right. There's two things here. First off, be on time for your interview. If it's technological, I hope you're ready. Don't, don't get thrown off by technology. If it's in person, show up in the area 30 minutes in advance. Not their office, not their office. 
sit down, review your notes, collect yourself, make sure you have the right amount of caffeine, uh, carbohydrates, whatever you need to get through uh, your interview itself and keep your energy levels balanced. And then allow just enough time to get through building security and floor security. So you arrive in their office five to 15 minutes before the interview, not one moment early. You may show up at 10.35 for 11 o'clock interview and think that's great. And your 11 o'clock's here. Oh, my day's already out of control. Now I can't leave you sitting out there 25 minutes. I have to put on a happy face. Oh, <laughs> hi, nice to see you. Uh, I'll see you right at 11, can't wait for a discussion. Oh, you're already messing up my day because you didn't think about courtesy and demonstration. You only thought about, I'll be eager. Eager doesn't always get it. Next step opportunity, the whole time you're talking about excitement. And lastly, you have to understand to ask for the job. And I don't mean literally, I want this job, although there may be a time I might say that, but most of it is as we come to the conclusion of the interview, it's as simple as going, gosh, Jack, Jim, or Jill, I'm, I'm so excited by what we discussed. What's our next step? Uh, well, John, we're gonna walk you down the hall to meet Jim, which was on the agenda. <laughs> yes, yes, even though I may know what's literally coming next, I have to ask it. It's very similar in the brain when they get together for something called the round table, you know, after they meet six to eight people, they're going to get together for a round table. Those resumes fly across the table. What do we think? What do we think of these people? You know who they remember? Oh, I can't, I, I'm so excited. What's our next step? What's our next step? That's the person they remember. So let's make sure to ask for the job at the end. Don't be tentative. It's a date. I love this date. Exactly. You know, interviews are a sales process. That's what it really is. We have to take back control because it's a sales process. And because it's a sales process, it's very easy for us to make our case if we don't fall in the trap of questions and answers or letting it be like an interrogation or something like that. Now, all things being equal, people are hired because of chemistry, assuming you're capable and qualified. So we have to talk a little bit about building chemistry, this, this work love connection thing of they cannot live without our skill set. Well, just like an actual date, it's got to be about them before it's ever about you. Walk in the room, the room to get a date and there's a whole bunch of people. Hey, who'd like to date me? Who'd like to date me? Who'd like to date me? And me, 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 me. Think anybody wants to date Mr. Me? Not going to happen. So what you need to do is show a real and genuine, genuine interest, both in the company and, and, and everything else. It can't be that, oh, I want that job. That's about you. It's a date. It's all about, yes, how you could add value to the job. That's about them. Slight bit of angular difference there. Of course, researching the company job and more that was up on the other slide, having your marketing materials ready. You know, when it's time to sell, all that stuff has to be ready. So I hope your resume really is the essence and value of your career on a single sheet of paper that within five seconds makes them jump out of the chair. <gasps> Get them in here. Get them on the phone. I have to speak with them. That's the resume's job, to create the urgency, the excitement, and to tell your story within seconds, which means it needs a lot of editing and a lot of control. Full disclosure, when I'm working on a client's resume, there is not a single sentence anywhere on the resume. We're in a world where people no longer read. Why would you put sentences on a resume? doesn't make sense. You have to distill that down to concept communication that can be absorbed, not read, absorbed within seconds. Check out my resume renovation lecture. It will help you there. Uh, in terms of uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn lecture, it'll help you a lot. That's another way to extend your value, help close the deal. But really all of your materials have to be taken into account. That's your messaging, uh, your emails, everything. Your leave behind, if you leave behind something during the email. By the way, I know we're on remote interviewing for most of what we're doing right now, but you could still do the concept of a leave behind after the interview, something special to leave them about your background because I can email that to them afterward as part of the thank you. And then they have some document with all of our great selling points that they could walk down the hall and talk to others about. It's really a sales tool to help them. Now, the real homework in getting ready for interviews is really preparing all the answers. So you're the expert in your background. Make a list of the questions that you would ask if you were the hiring manager. What would you ask to find the right person, which is you? Now, take all of those questions and you're going to add three self-recruiter questions. These are pretty clear and straightforward. Tell me why I should hire you over all others that I see. 
Now, not very likely to ask this question this way, but it's kind of throwing down the gauntlet. I certainly expect that some of the elements of this answer should be mixed into my other answers to make sure that conveys. Second question on the self recruiter side is tell me why my work life will get easier or better if I hire you. <laughs> Very much not likely to ask you this type of question, but my gosh, the elements of this answer must be integrated into your other answers because if you make my life easier or better, I'm hiring you today. You didn't forget it was a date and it was all about me and how it gets better for me. Probably get better for you too if it gets better for me. Last one, of course, you really already know, why is it going to be the best business decision that I make today if I choose to hire you? Once again, not likely to ask this question directly, but I sure hope you have elements of that answer mixed in all over the place. Now, practice makes perfect. Very few people can be really great off the cuff. You're going to have to get with a coach, get with a friend, and practice, practice, practice until you're blue in the face. And if you need a good coach, I, I know where to find one. By the way, I should mention, whether it's reinventing resume, reinventing and building out full LinkedIn three-dimensional sales brochure profiles, whether it's coaching on interviewing, all my services are over on the Self Recruiter website right under the services tab. If you need to, to chat before we, uh, you know which package is really the right one for you, send me a quick email and we'll set up a time to talk. Follow-up. Your follow-up is, is critically important. Your thank you notes. It is shocking to me how few people bother to send a thank you note. You want to be a standout? Just send a darn thank you note. And my gosh, you'll automatically be in a very high percentage uh, of the top of the list because so few people do it. But your thank you notes can also solve problems in advance if you do a little debrief after the interview. This is a self-diagnosis piece. So we're going to do this debrief. This is like you feel <laughs> those interviews are a series of questions that really are cross-examination and interrogation. You know, oh my gosh. Yeah, we cross-examine ourselves to find out the good, the bad, the ugly, what went well, what went poorly, where did I stick my foot in my mouth? Oh my gosh. You know, in fact, I might have even avoided speaking about something very, very important out of fear. Oh, I don't want to talk about that subject because I don't have a very deep knowledge. And yet sometimes that's an important piece that has to be discussed or they won't hire us. Most important question you save till last. There's no thinking about this. This is a regurgitated gut reaction. Ask this after every single interview and very quickly you will train your gut to regurgitate just the right information. Here's the question. If they don't move forward with you or if they don't hire you, What's the reason? There's no thought. Oh, maybe because I'm weak in area A. Okay, well, let's think about that. Is area A important to this role? Yes. <laughs> Did you talk about area A in the interview? Uh, no, I was, I, I was afraid I've only worked on two projects. Oh, okay. Now we backed ourselves into a corner. No wonder they don't feel confident about us. So um, we have to overcome this in the thank you note process. After thanking them, and please, please don't thank people ever, ever again for their time. That makes you subservient to them. You have to be absolutely equal. So thank them for their great insights or the discussion, blah, blah, blah. And then segue to a, a new paragraph. By the way, we didn't have a lot of opportunity to discuss area A, where I've worked on projects such as this and that. You know, if you'd like to discuss that, don't hesitate to reach out at any time. Best, John, click send. Now, I didn't confess because it's not confessional. It's truthful, not confessional. I didn't confess. It's the only two projects I've worked on. Yeah, they probably think those are representative. I never said that. Those are two projects like this or that, which was like, absolutely. This actually saved one of my promotions a couple of decades ago. <laughs> yeah, a couple of decades ago. Absolutely. Uh, was moving up from being the a departmental manager, number one department in the entire country out of 121 locations. Well, my general manager for the whole location went up to be country manager of Canada. And so John was already number one for the whole department out of 121 locations. I saw the throne and I thought, well, I should ascend to the throne. <laughs> Plus, this was a massive operation, 43 employees, now round the clock nightmare. It wasn't like the small little locations that were all around. This is one of the big monster locations. And since I was proven on the, the P&L in my department, I thought, Gosh, I should take that job and uh, had a great discussion. This was 
all before my time as a, as a recruiter, didn't really know about interviewing, didn't really know about hiring and firing, even though I'd hired and fired many people in multiple roles. Doesn't mean I knew it, what I was doing, uh, gut instinct essentially. And so I thought I did pretty well. And I went back to my location. I called my spy. Oh, very good to have a spy. Called my spy in headquarters going, oh, yeah, yeah, I think it went well. I think it went well. No, no, I, I, they're in there arguing about you right now. Something about your vision for the store. Oh, <laughs> how could I have forgotten to communicate my vision for the store? So fired off exactly one of these thank you notes. And I said, oh, thank you for the great discussion, the insights, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm very good with the soft skills, even though I didn't know what I was doing. And, and then I said, we didn't have a lot of opportunity to talk about my vision for the store. If you'd like to talk about that, reach out at any time. Best, John, click send. And in a panic, bullet pointing out that vision for the store. Gonna call me, gonna call me in a minute, gonna call me in a minute. Never called me. Got the job. Ah, look, he has a vision for the store. He has a, it doesn't really matter. He can't change anything anyway. But he has a vision. Or save my bacon on that one. Wow, I'm very excited uh, by what I've, we've discussed and how I can contribute to the team. What's the next step? Ask for the job. Now let's get over to the video interviewing side and what we need to do there because that's the world we live in today. Your video might be Zoom or Meet or who knows what other technology is just around the corner. You have to master those and be comfortable in those, even if you're not. It can be scheduled, unscheduled, it can be in-person. Well, not as likely these days. Your job uh, is, is to convey confidence. And most times that's gonna be over a video conference. So in getting ourselves ready in a COVID-19 era uh, of interviewing, we have to think about, well, what are we gonna do a little differently? How are we gonna get this all to work? It's still about chemistry and confidence, but we have to do it at a distance. So I'm gonna go a little bit smaller here and pull these center screen for you here. There we go. That's a little bit better here. Um, so. Again, it's about chemistry and confidence winning the race. I, I don't really feel the chemistry. I don't really feel the confidence. I don't know if I see that here. And I'm not even sure this person knows they're on a job interview, right? So if they, if they don't work for a baseball team or something along those lines, um, something seems quite amiss here. Well, chemistry and confidence win the race. Do we see it? Do we see it? Well, I, I'm not really feeling the chemistry, not really feeling the confidence. I don't really see it here. I can't really even see you. I, I can see maybe the sky out your window and, and you hunched over, huddled. Doesn't make me feel confident at all. Didn't give this a lot of thought. Chemistry and confidence win the race. So I don't really feel the chemistry and I, I certainly don't really feel the confidence. This person probably thinks they're very confident, but I'm not feeling any of it. Uh, in fact, all I can really see is, is the ceiling or, or up this person's nose and that is not a good look. Looking down on top of your camera is not a good look. You, you see that I'm not looking down on top of my camera because you're about to see shortly how I have my setup. And the computer is, I'm standing by the way, I'm six, six foot one. <laughs> the computer is well up into the middle of the air and the camera on top of the computer is well above that. So I'm not even looking at my screen, I'm looking up at the camera. Very, very, very important, these things, details. Chemistry and confidence win the race, do we see it here? Chemistry, no. Confidence, I'll give the confidence. I'll give the confidence until I take it away. Uh, I suspect this person doesn't actually have confidence, even though my first reaction is confidence, because two things. They've chosen a background image. I have a background image here today. Nothing wrong with that. But they've chosen a background image, which is distracting from them. You are the product. Oh, I know they're in the middle of it, but it's kind of like, hey, could you get out of the way and I, can I take a look at this picture? Because you're blocking it. It keeps pulling my eye. Also, this gigantic boom mic, you know, we're not here to game. That, that's not a good look. And that really says you're hiding behind that apparatus. And I don't think you're the right one. Chemistry and confidence win the race. You know what? I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I feel the chemistry. I feel the confidence. Uh, but attention to detail. This person won those two things, but they allowed themselves to be upstaged the way they set up the scene. This picture on the wall behind them keeps pulling my eye. Now I can't see it, but I keep wanting to see it. So as this person's talking and moving, I'm continually looking behind them. They allow themselves to be upstaged. Chemistry and confidence win the race. Do I see it? Do I feel it? You know what? I will give the votes here. I'm feeling it. I actually visually like their setup, visually, but we have some problems here. Again, they allowed themselves to be upstaged because they did not pay attention to the detail. 
having these this this curved wall of images with glass on the front of the images causes obviously a terrible reflection. And most of the time, my eyes keep going just to try to figure out what those images are because you got upstaged. Chemistry and confidence win the race. Do we see it here? Do we see it? You know what? I, I feel the chemistry. I'll give them the confidence. And and uh, But please don't wear giant uh, uh, Princess Leia headphones. We don't need ear buns. Um, that is not a good look. Oh, I love listening over the headphones. I do too. But you need to win the day not be comfortable. Take those things off. It looks terrible. Chemistry and confidence win the race. Do we see it here? Do we see it here? You know, I do see it here. And you know what? I'm going to give them kudos on this swapped out background. Yeah, it's just another stage background. That's fine. But this one properly makes the person the focal point. So I'm going to give them all that, but they're still going to get dinged for those darn headphones. They're not the giant Princess Leah ones, but get the darn giant headphones off your head. That is not a good look, and it undermines confidence. Chemistry and confidence win the race. Do we see it here? Do we see it? You know what? I'll give them both votes. This is actually the best setup of the day, even though it still has some problems. We still have that upward angle problem because we didn't deal with that. But there's just enough elements on the left, just enough elements on the right, that it's interesting, properly frames the person, decent lighting, it's all there. This one is the winner if all things were equal and all things are never equal. Try to line up as many dominoes as possible. This is part of your personal branding. We're this product. Every single thing about this product, everything that determines brand that can separate us from others is part of what we need to solve here. So. Make sure all of the attention to detail across all of your materials is done and make sure that we understand how to set up an, an interview properly. Now, let's go back here and we're gonna show you my behind the scenes setup so you understand what's creating the visual you're looking at today. Think about how you feel about today's video before you see the background. Now, let's see what we're really dealing with. Well, this isn't what we're really dealing with. This is what my other half deals with. You know, It's a work from home type situation. So out in the other room, they have one of our tables put up against the window as their desk. They're looking directly into the sunny window. Now, I have hazel eyes. I don't really like looking directly into the sunny window. But you know what? On camera, they look amazing. And you have to be, think about that. So we do need great light to look amazing. There's multiple ways to get that great light. Now, if the uh, light behind the curtain or behind the window is too much for John's eyes, which it really is, well, my gosh, then what I'm going to do is pull down those blinds and you're going to have to have some supplemental lighting. Here we have a giant light ring. You'll notice also in this iteration, my other half elevated the computer to achieve the camera being up at eye level. They put a light ring behind it and the light ring behind it has a color adjust wheel so that you can adjust it depending on how your camera so you don't look too blue or red or whatever it might be. Think about all this attention to detail. If you would like to sound great, you know what? You're going to need a great mic. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the microphone that's built in is adequate, adequate. Would you like to be adequate? Or would you like to be better than adequate? You're going to need a condenser mic. This is what you're listening to me on right now. It's just sitting here. It's just absorbing it. A nice condenser mic, not that expensive. It is worth the investment to sound great. Yes, this is actually where I'm standing. I'm set up in, in the, the main bedroom. All the windows are closed tight so we don't get any light leakage. I'm set up with a series of light panels all around. We're going to flip this view so you see the whole thing. And I'm talking to you facing my ironing board with all the multiple boxes you see piled up, computer all the way up in the air, mic up in the air, all of that. So we do not only need great light, we need great height, and all of that will kind of help us. The flip side is I'm literally standing in front of a wall, in front of a green screen. I just knocked on the green screen that you see in this visual. It's just right there. Off to the other side, you see I have a light box on all sides around me. Back to the fact that I'm, I have hazel eyes and intense light bothers me. It really does, unless I'm on stage. <laughs> and then somehow my brain has gone, I love the light. I love I'm going blind. Um, so whether it's in person or this type of setup, you're going to have to get used to the fact of being in light and uncomfortable knowing it is accomplishing a great thing for your brand. So 
light all around. Make sure your thing is elevated. You may need a green screen for a better swap out. Make sure you have attention to detail, even like I have a nice uh, a bar stool essentially standing right below uh, my uh, ironing board so that I have a place for my drink. I have a place for my clicker if I want to set it down. Next to that on the end of the ironing board, I have a box of tissues. If I had notes, I could have it there. All sorts of things that if I needed it, it could be handy. Uh, and then we have to also emotionally disconnect ourselves from the screen so that we can actually deal with the camera itself. That feels a little bit like flying without a safety net, but that's where we're going to have to get comfortable. Now, all that, let's think about how we're going to improve our piece. Let me just come back over to the middle here. I really appreciate you guys tuning in today. Understand there's a few different versions of this lecture. I recommend you check out each of them. And if you'd like a deeper discussion of that, how to get the best money, check out one of the other interview intervention lectures from a few weeks ago, and you can have the full lengthy piece. It's your job to teach them before you walk in that door, figuratively or literally, teach them how to select you as the right person. Warm up that audience. Have all of your story ready. Understand it's a date. And really, it's your job, even in the interview process, to discover their timeline for their process, timeline for the decision. When would they love people on board? When are they going to be in deep trouble, uh, painful trouble somehow, if they don't have the person? All of that discussion that you could extract in conversation will help you better understand what should by next step or next step after that, or even after that be. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you need help prepping for your next interview, or if your uh, LinkedIn profile is a shell and not really a three-dimensional sales brochure, or if your resume is stuck in a very old format, not really uh, producing the essence and value of your career that can be absorbed within seconds, I think you know exactly who you should work with. Uh, selfrecruiter.com, everything's over under the services tab, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. See you guys on Thursday at 12 noon. Take care.